name's Ali and um, this is my first full day in the Priory today. I didn't want to go into hospital, but looking back on it, it was one of the best things I've ever done. I know that anything more than what the point that I got to, I would have just died. I firmly believe that if I hadn't been writing letters and pushing for funding, that it might not have come in time. It's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, I might have had to have buried my daughter uh, by now rather than being almost ready to welcome her back. I had to wait ten months to get the funding that I needed to get into hospital, um, throughout which I lost almost three stone, and I, f I felt like I had to be practically on the verge of death at a dangerously low weight before, before I could receive any funding money and to get my treatment. First weigh in this morning. I don't know how much I weigh. They won't tell me. My weight's gone from about nine stone ten to five, about five and a half stone, which um, at my weight, at my height, is um, like extremely dangerous. I have to get a stair lift down the tri downstairs, which is so embarrassing. It's just humiliating, and uh, and then I have to get a wheelchair, which is like not. It's not even a two-minute walk to the dining room, and then we sit there. That for the first time, they, the way they treated her made her feel that she was very ill. I don't think she realised herself how much in danger of death she was. When I was at um, quite a low weight, a Brazilian model who was the same height as me and the same weight as me um, just died on the catwalk, and that was such a shock for me. I didn't realise that I was in such a, I was in that kind of same frame. I basically let go of all my control. Um, and other people have it on me and I'm not used to it. I find my anxiety the most when I feel like nurses are watching me and I've always had a problem with people watching me and people commenting on my food and stuff. The consultant had hoped that Ali would spend another four months as an inpatient, um, but the funding wasn't given for that. It's not what's best for, for Ali that is what's given, it's what the, the funders will give. I feel really scared that now I'm sort of on my own again and terrified to slip back to the illness because that's the last thing I want to do. The neglect of the government of, by there not being an eating disorders unit in South Wales just um, it doesn't consider mental illness seriously enough and I think um, you know I'm, I'm really fortunate, I feel really fortunate to have a place in the Br Bristol Hospital but you know, what about the other people suffering out there? She's 18. She's got a university waiting to take her. But at the moment, you know, the consultant said, no, she can't. She can't ma manage to go to university yet. She can't drive yet. She, she's got many restrictions on her. You know, they, she's, she's been advised not to work in the food industry. She's been advised not to work in the retail industry. Anything that takes a lot of physical effort, she's not supposed to be doing. I don't know, to be honest, if you can ever fully recover from an eating disorder. I think it just depends on how you manage the illness and make sure that you can control it rather than it control you. I feel a lot better than how I was before, um, physically and mentally. But I think there is still a way to go. I just wanted to share my story with anyone, you know, if anyone's in the same boat as I was, feeling completely helpless and like there's nothing else in their life but the illness. I'm just encouraging you to get help. My biggest fear is that she may relapse. And that's not that I don't believe in how hard she works, because I know she works very hard. But I think that the odds are stacked against her. I want to get better, so bad because I've had enough of this, like anorexia's taking over my life and it's destroying my life and I want to destroy it before it destroys me.